Right, uh, will you all please stand? remain standing for the singing of hymn number 10, Now Thank We All Our God. Now be placed. 
Please be seated for the reading. Ecclesiastics 44. Let us now sing the praises of famous men. Let them be the heroes of our nation's history, through whom the Lord established his renown and revealed his majesty in each succeeding age. Some held sway over kingdoms and made themselves a name by their exploits. Others were sage counselors who spoke out with prophetic power. Some led the people by, by their counsels and by the knowledge of their nation's laws. Out of the fund of their wisdom, they gave instructions. Some were composers of music and writers of poetry. Others were endowed with wealth and strength, living peacefully in their homes. All these won f f fame in their generations and were the pride of their times. Some there are who have left a name behind them to be commemorated in story. There are others who are unremembered. They are dead, and it is as though they never existed, as though they never had been born or left children to succeed them. Not so our forefathers. They were men of loyalty whose good deeds have never been forgotten. Their prosperity is handed on to their descendants and their inheritance to future generations. Thanks to them, their children are within the covenants, the whole race of their descendants. Their line will endure for all time, and their fame will never be blotted out. Their bodies are buried in peace, but their names live forever. Nations will recount their wisdom, and God's people will sing their praises. Let us bow our heads in prayer, each to our own God. Dear Heavenly Father, today, as we celebrate the founding of our great school, we want to acknowledge all those who have gone before us, we want to thank them and honor them for their role in establishing a school where young women can be educated and reach their full potential. We celebrate every old girl and past staff member who have walked the passages of our school. We ask you for your blessings on them. Lord, we thank you for the unique gift of every girl and staff member at Collegiate. Fill each one of our girls with fresh enthusiasm and a heart that is excited to learn and grow. Give us confidence and grace and equip us with the ability to persevere through hardships. As we grow in knowledge, help us to grow also in kindness, compassion, learning respect for ourselves and others. Bless our teachers with wisdom, understanding, and our heart to serve. We also ask your blessing, dear Lord, on our parents and family members. Strengthen them to surround us with encouragement, support, and love. Remind us that wherever we go, you are always with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Will you please stand for the singing of the Lord's Prayer. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome each and every one of you to the celebration of the 148th Founders Day of Collegiate. A special welcome to the stage party 
to our head girl, Dick Clawe Nogampula, our deputy head girl, Kerry Broadbent, the principal of the junior school, Mrs. Shelley van Royen, the president of the OCGG, Mrs. Shelley Heinecke, our guest speaker, Olwetu Nodada of the, the class of matric, the class of 2002, the deputy principals, Mr. Gunter Marx and Mrs. Sandra Herber, the school management team, Mrs. Jenny Eurster, Mrs. Haley Carter, Mrs. Annika Nell, Mrs. Rihanna Lotz, and Mr. Jacques Batista. I also welcome Dr. Susan Whale, the Deputy Principal of Collegiate Junior School and the House Captains of the Junior School. Welcome to our special guests, Mrs. Liesel Ninaber, the Chairman of the School Governing Body, Mrs. Faith Biggs, former Acting Principal of the School and past members of the staff of Collegiate who are with us today. Now a very warm welcome to the ladies from the various reunion groups. I'm going to call them out. And please raise your hands and let us know where you are. <laughs> 10 years. 15. Ooh, 15 is missing in action. 20. 30. 40, 50, any 60s, 60 plus, <laughs> 70 plus, That's quite a long time, girls. <laughs> and you know what? Matric of 1946, I think it was last night, at the reunion dinner, spoke. And she was quite amazing. So one day, I will probably be dead and buried by then. <laughs> when you are 93, please come back. <laughs> Maybe by then, we'll have 103s. Okay, to continue with the welcomes, welcome also to the old girls who are not here in person, but who are watching the live streaming. To all others who are watching the live streaming, parents of current girls and friends of the school, welcome. Finally, to the teachers and the administrative staff, as well as all the girls of the college, the matrix grade eight and 11, who are sitting here in the hall and the grades nine and 10 who are in the classrooms watching the live streaming. Welcome to this most special assembly. I begin this Founders Day assembly by paying tribute to a much loved past member of staff and head of department who would have taught many of you here today. Mrs. Jackie Avery passed away on the 19th of July, 2021 after suffering with Parkinson's disease and then PSP for about two years. She joined the collegiate staff in 1987 and took early retirement in 2015 to travel worldwide with her retired husband, Bruce Avery. Jackie Avery was a much loved and respected mathematics teacher and colleague. And she was always going for fun especially acting in the staff performances at the matric dinners. You can see that there, those are memories that you still have. If you are up near the games club this afternoon or tomorrow, you will find a bench on the side of the cricket field. Read the words on the back of the bench. And if you were taught by Mrs. Avery, you will hear in your mind the famil her familiar voice saying, let's go girls. I ask now for a moment's silence to pay respect not only to the late Mrs. Avery, but also to those of the collegiate community, old girls and parents who have passed away during the time of the pandemic of the past two.
two years. Thank you. A few reflections. In 1962, 60 years ago, Miss Waterfield, who adorns a wall over there, started her time as headmistress of the school. Janet Powell was the head girl, and I'm sure that she, as well as the standard tens of that year, which is the grade twelves today, had much to teach Miss Waterfield about collegiate. In fact, at the end of the year, Miss Waterfield wrote, I have been impressed, as I often have before, by the willingness shown by such a large number of collegiate girls to take considerable trouble to help those less fortunate than themselves by their own hard work. And it is interesting to note the words written that year by the Standard 10 editorial committee of the school magazine. For us, our departure from school marks the end of a long family association with the collegiate. Here we have learnt the meaning of the hard right against the easy wrong. That is certainly an apt definition of what integrity ent entails integrity being one of collegiate's five values. Fifty years ago, the 1972 group, that Standard 10 editorial group wrote, we were not the last matrix in the old school, nor we were, were we the first in the new school. We do not seem to have anything to distinguish us from those who passed before and those who will come after us. We are the only ones who consider ourselves to be something special, but we must admit we might be prejudiced. But that's a lesson. Always think, believe in yourself. But as an educator, I beg to differ. Now, schools are fairly predictable in that we follow a similar program each year. We follow a daily timetable. We are governed by bells. We see girls in the same uniform sitting in front of us each day. However, we see each girl as special. It is what motivates us each day. And when years have passed and we think back, it is not the great achievements, the girls that we remember, but the funny moments in class, the antics on camps, the note of appreciation written that is special. In 1982, my matric here, but not here, 40 years ago, was Mrs. Jenkins' final year as headmistress of collegiate. By all accounts, one entered her presence with a certain amount of trepidation in that she was exacting in the standards that she demanded of staff and girls. Reading the magazine, she must have been just that, as it's recorded there that the boarders showed their mettle because they won sports day. So boarders, you can do it. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some shock boarders. However, Miss Jenkins was also described as having remarkable serenity, quiet courage and wisdom, rare empathy and compassion. Her farewell words to the class of 1982 were as true in 1982 as they are now. Right through life, you will have to make decisions, minor or major. And this is where I come to the words I should like to leave with you. Whatever you do, think carefully. Think before you speak. Think before you write, and think before you act. Thirty years ago, the class of 1992 saw some changes to the school. The West Wing extension, and I quote, rose like a phoenix from the ground, adding the art room and the library media center. The original art room then became a cafeteria, the original ivy leaf, and the library became the auditorium. That original art room is now a fully equipped drama room, 
and dramatic arts is one of our elective subjects. Five of the class of 1992 made history that year. Back in 1980, Collegiate Junior School had opened its first pre-primary class. And these five girls were the first matrix to have been at Collegiate from grade naught. To give an indication of how the school has grown, last year there were 42 girls who had been at Collegiate from pre-primary, some I think from the age of three to grade 12. That's a real Collegiate girl. Taryn Fick, the 1992 head girl, ended her report with, if it can be said of you that there were times when you didn't have time and yet you took the time, there were times when you had enough cares of your own and yet you cared, there were times when you had given all you had to give and yet you kept on giving, you will have discovered the power of being a person, the power of being you, and that nobody can take away. 1997, the 25 years reunion group. That year had the arguable distinction of marking the end of the classical education. For 123 years, Latin had been taught at collegiate, but sadly, changes in society had led to its demise. The 1997 Latin class of just five girls have been immortalized in the annals of collegiate in a photograph alongside an article entitled, Latin, Rest in Peace. <laughs> I'm looking for Mrs. Joseph. I'm not sure if she's here today. Along with it was a quote of Catullus's words, and heaven knows if I'm going to pronounce this correctly, atqua in perpetuum Ave atque vale, loosely translated as, and forever hail and farewell, or as I salute you and goodbye. Head girl Jeanette Noel had a different farewell message to her class of 1997. She ended her valedictory message by quoting Art Garfunkel. Younger girls, he was a singer. <laughs> and the quote is, Long as you are in my heart, we'll never say goodbye. And I think because many are in your hearts, that's why you're back here today. One 1997 matric took Jeanette's words to heart and has actually never really said goodbye to Collegiate. Heidi Friskin, known to current girls as Mrs. Carter, the English teacher, came back five years later in 2002 and she was the first full year PGCE student, which was a new qualification at Collegiate. She then came back to teach one day, and she went away, and then she came back again, and fortunately, no more babies, so she's still here today. <laughs> and then in fact today, is thanks to Mrs. Carter, who has overseen all the organization and made this Founders Day happen. I think she deserves a round of applause. I mentioned the babies because I was Mrs. Carter's head of English and she came and she had a baby and she came back and immediately resigned <laughs> because she was going to have another one. The 2002 matric class has produced our guest speaker today, Olwetu, and we look forward to hearing your message. However, I hope that it's not as risque as the Founders Day speaker's speech of 2002. Her speech was entitled, How to Kiss Successfully. I don't think I'm going to go into further detail with that title, but it might amaze some of you who've maybe forgotten, is that that speech, the guest speaker was Mrs. Natalie Steer, who was a deputy principal here at one stage and then principal of Rebecca Girls. 
But if you go and read the speech, it's actually got nothing to do about how to kiss. But, yeah. Sadly, the class of 2002 has suffered the loss of a dear classmate, Catherine Darley, Nathor Thornton. Chanel Munro sent the following message. An indigenous cheesewood tree has kindly been donated by the class of 2002. This is in loving memory of one of the kindest, most incredible souls, Catherine Darley, Darley Nay Thornton. This beautiful tree will hold her legacy and memories for years to come. May the friendships formed under its shade stand strong and true as she once did. Catherine, you will be missed and loved always. The class of 2002 is also donating a suitable bench to grace the refurbished old blue area for years to come, and we thank you. Ten years ago, 2012, Mrs. Bagshaw had then been in the principal's position for not quite a year, a position the late Miss Pam Cameron Ellis had held for 26 years. The school was entering a time of change in many areas, but something which stayed the same was the collegiate carols. That year, 2012, was the centenary year of the collegiate carols, 100 years, and it still continues today, albeit for the past two years, it was in pre-recorded fashion and shown online. There were many memorable moments in 2012, border flash mobs, excelling at the All Girls Festival in Potchefstroom, the introduction of the grade 10 camp for several days, Cookie Day and Forgetting Cookie Day, <laughs> the King and I production, the new honours board recording the head girls of the school, which hangs in the corridor alongside the hall, the OCGG reunion dinner returned to the Stevenson Hall, but then it departed again the following year. So what has happened in the last 10 years that you would find different from your memories of collegiate? The school turned 140 in 2014 and hosted the All Girls School Sport and Cultural Festival for the third year. The first male deputy principal, Derek Jordan, was appointed in 2013 and served the school well until moving to the principal position at Clarendon Park Primary School. The staff room was enlarged and the front office was remodeled to be more inviting. The library was revamped and modernized due to the financial generosity of Mrs. Jill Gray, Nada Vet, and the time and hard work of Sarah Bisday, Sinol Girl, was poured into that library and we thank her for that. The original art room, which had become the old cafeteria Ivy Leaf, and then converted to classrooms is now the large drama room, complete with theatre lights. The cottage behind, between the pools has been converted to the games club, and we hope to see you there later. Two classes. There was a competition last year to name that venue, and two classes came up with the games club from our school song. The college girls' shop has closed, and the uniform has been, selling of that, provision of that has been outsourced to Birches. That college girl venue is slowly being converted to a meeting or boardroom. The blue area flooring has recently been replaced and the area is now lighter with an air of spaciousness. Although now beige, or sort of beige, old names die hard, so it is currently known as the old blue area. Five courageous women canvases are hanging in the old blue area and these promote our five values which were settled on and decided through a lengthy exercise um, uh, in incorporating old girls, staff and current girls. These are Pemba's striking painting of the wedding commissioned in 2017 hangs in the same area. A selection of the girls' art pieces, each year printed, framed, 
and then hung around the school. We really have talented art girls in this school. Girls' artworks now grace the Queen's stairs, and it will be an honor for a girl to have her artwork hanging in there and lit up each day. The transformation task team mandated for a year at the end of 2016 resulted in the comfortable in our skins policy. There is now a permanent diversity, inclusivity and transformation committee of the school governing body. The Sima Mele forum has been introduced where learners discuss relevant but sometimes difficult topics in a structured way. And if you pay a visit to the resource center this morning, you will see the framed posters of the two forums that have happened already, signed by the speakers of those forums. And those are hanging on the wall, and as we go forward, it will, the collection will grow. We have introduced a successful educator internship position for a postgraduate student in financial need and from a previously disadvantaged group. There is a renewed focus on rolling up our sleeves, fact and verba, and engaging with the community, be it through mass making in the quad of love sandwiches or giving of time to the St. Augustine Primary School Library. We partner with the Guardian Company on safeguarding practices to ensure the safeguarding of all learners. We have a wellness department with two counselors, one with a social work background and a clinical psychologist and overseen by one of the deputy principals. The hostel dining room now boasts a magnificent servery. The campus has borehole water, and soon the school's plumbing will run on this borehole water. The fences around the netball courts were removed, bringing the game closer to the spectators. The 50 meter pool, centenary pool, was unfortunately condemned and then converted to a 25 meter pool, which recently popped, so it's currently being repaired. We have a cricket pitch, not quite the real McCoy, and we have a successful cricket team, which is a reintroduction of cricket, because collegiate had cricket in the late 1800s. The biggest change over the past 10 years has been the development and implementation of a digital technology strategy there is Wi-Fi throughout the school and the hostel. Every teaching venue has a data projector and an Apple TV. Every girl has a device, which in grade eights and nines, and from now on must be an iPad or an, an Apple MacBook. We are a Microsoft Teams school, and this is the prime means of communication with the girls daily. When a hard lockdown happened in 2020, we had a quick course and went straight to teaching a full timetable each day online using the MS Teams platform and largely looking at little round circles. <laughs> so when we went online the second time, we made it compulsory to have the camera on. Because we used to say to the circle, we have a um, Kerry. Please answer this question. Silence. Kerry. <laughs> Silence. Kerry. And Kerry was out in the garden doing something. <laughs> Who knows, maybe sleeping in a bed. So in, in this area, Collegiate has been at the forefront in Kabacha and no doubt helped to achieve a 100% pass rate last year with 131 out of the 134 pupils receiving bachelor passes. It is still our aim for every girl to attain a bachelor's pass. Perhaps, or hopefully, this will be the year. Grade 12s, let's make it the year. Nervous Twitter, we've got exams coming up. Looking forward, the 150 Jubilee is approaching rapidly, and we truly would like as many old girls to join us at the reunion in 2024. The old girls who were at the dinner last night heard about the Where in the World Is She initiative, which will soon be underway, and wouldn't it be fantastic to connect with all the girls from your year? Please help us to find you all. 
In 2024, the 150 Jubilee ce celebration will last the entire year and will be marked in different ways. Collegiate girls know how to have a party. <laughs> there is one project already underway. This is the 150 Books for 150 Years project, which aims to get as many people as possible reading and as many as possible to have read 150 books by 2024. The girls and the staff upload, upload their books onto Emma's teams and it will become quite a competition. It is also coupled with a community outreach project to promote and develop reading in the community, such as the project with the St. Augustine's Primary School. I would like to challenge you two old girls to read 150 books for 150 years. Some of you, I think, have a lot of time on your hands compared to us, and no doubt you're already reading lots of books. I am so excited for the 150 Jubilee, and I could tell you more, but I know that by now you're probably no longer listening to me. <laughs> so I, I want to just ask two things of you, old girls. Please participate in the Where in the World Is She initiative, and secondly, go to your calendar in Outlook. Don't take out your phones and do it now. Phones are not allowed in the hall. But go to your calendar in Outlook and mark 2024 as the big 150 celebration. To end, I'm going to refer to my remarks at the Founders Day Assembly last year. I said that 1991, which is now 31 years ago, is, I believe, the second founding of Collegiate. It is the year that Collegiate's management team and the school committee grasped the opportunity given by the government of the time to adopt a non-racial admissions policy and to open the doors to all children of South Africa. This was an act of integrity, which is one of our core values, and it started the new journey to becoming a united school of all races where all are comfortable in their skins. Journeys never really end. We just progress further down the road. Sometimes we hit potholes and the scenery might change, but the values that drive the sisterhood of strong, confident, collegiate girls, united in our diversity remain. I will now call on the president of the OCGG, Shelley Heineke, to read the messages. Good morning, Ms. Erasmus, special guests, staff, old girls, and girls of the college. I have a couple of messages to read out, so please bear with me. To the collegiate family, happy 148th birthday. From small beginnings, you have developed significantly and proudly over the years. We, the past girls, are very grateful for the academic foundation you gave us to have successful careers, the opportunity you gave us to have healthy bodies and to laugh and have fun on sports fields, the values of service, dedication, decency that enabled us to be caring mothers and to give others the chance to make best friends who still adds spice to our lives today. To the principal, staff, and president, the present girls of the college, we send our love and best wishes on this day just of celebration. We think of you and support you in your endeavors to follow on and to build the place that continues to offer these worthwhile gifts, the old girls. From Doreen Noel, dear Mrs. Erasmus, just want to wish you, staff, and girls all the best for the good, a good and enjoyable Founders Day on Friday. I miss being involved in all that. Enjoy the dinner on Thursday too. Doreen. Good morning, Mrs. Erasmus. Thinking of you and the Collegiate Girls High School, present and past on Founders Day. May you all enjoy the celebrations. Greetings and my best wish to, wishes to you all. With love, Denise Morris. Dear Mrs. Erasmus and Collegiate, best wishes for a wonderful 148th Founders Day. May all learners, staff, and old girls feel the ethos of Collegiate. 
We were privileged to have been educated at such a great institution. The times we live in are sometimes extremely difficult, but thanks to you and your staff's dedication, Collegia will continue to educate girls to be prepared for life. Maybe they don't believe it now, but in time, they will. Congratulations and enjoy all the festivities. Rose van Bolderman. I wish both collegiate schools a very happy Founders Day today, and I would like to send the present girls of the college, in particular the matrix, who are today, who are today attend their final Founders Day, this message. Ladies, you are your own masterpiece in the making. In the way you choose to present yourselves to the world throughout your lives, so, many, uh, so, may, so may you at all times travel along your journey of life, learning each day as you move through the various challenges and choices which present themselves to you along the way, taking with you all that you have learned at Collegiate. Remembering at all times that you are and remain a Collegiate girl, and with that choice comes years, decades, and a century of pride in the Father Tempest who is flying before you as you proceed on your pathway into womanhood to reach your goal. What is available to you now out in the world has been so strongly fought for by the women who have gone before you, and you will always be a reflection of what Collegiate was created to be and maintain to this day for you as this generation, even as the times, society, and indeed the world have changed. Take with you the motto of collegiate schools chosen all those years ago when the school was founded of facta non verba and choose to honour it in all that you do. Beverly Carruthers, Honorary President of the Old, uh, Old Collegiate Girls Guild. And finally, dear Mrs Erasmus, staff, old girls and girls of the college, my heartiest congratulations go to you all on the celebration of Collegiate Girls High School's 148th birthday. May the festivities bring old friends together with reminiscence of times gone by. May this week also create new memories for the present girls of Collegiate as they honour those who have gone before them. I wish to express my condolence to those who have lost loved ones during this pandemic. Also, the old girls who are no longer with us and who were not able to celebrate the school's Founders Week in the last two years. May they rest in peace. To all the ladies, past and present, I pray that the strength of the sisterhood of this school sustains you all through the days and years ahead. I salute you with love and best wishes. Melita Bagshaw. Thank you. <laughs> I think before uh, we go on to our musical item, I'm going to let the girls who are sitting on the floor, who some are really getting stiff legs, I can see, just to stand quickly and quietly and stretch your legs, and then we'll sit down again. Hopefully those legs haven't gone to sleep and nobody's collapsing. Okay, girls, we can sit down again now. Okay, music has been a part of collegiate right from the 1800s. And today, Jade Strew, accompanied by Mrs. Runger, will perform for us Taurus the Bull on trumpet, after which Mr. Marks will introduce our guest speaker.
Thanks again to the music department for such uh, another wonderful effort. So thank you. Mrs. Erasmus, staff, learners, special guests, and most importantly, the old girls. My word, I must just say, it was, it was a real pleasure watching you coming through the, the front entrance there. It looked like you were some, on some kind of fashion runway. <laughs> Especially you six in the front here. <laughs> Where am I now? No, I don't, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's my privilege to introduce the guest speaker, Mrs. Olwetu uh, Nodada. Uh, is in her 30-something. Um, she's self-motivated and proudly South African female. And most importantly, a collegiate old girl from 2002, making her part of the 20-year reunion. One of her gifts, which you will which you will notice, is being able to connect with people. And I certainly can vouch for this after meeting her at the old girls' dinner last night. But instead of rambling on and boring our little grade eights out here, <laughs> I've chosen to show you all a short clip which sums up her special traits. After that, Oweti will address you. Thank you. Oluwe Tsunodata is a passionate and intentional advocate for empowering the girl child and creating spaces where individuals from all walks of life are seen, heard, and given the space to achieve to their highest potential. A former national marketing manager for Africa's largest optometric network, her transition into media and broadcasting has come as an aggravating and challenging adventure. She's had the honor of being crowned Miss South Africa Second Princess in 2020 and confined to serve as a mentor for the organization. After only two years in the industry, she is now a radio host on Cape Town's biggest radio station. She is the go-to host and MC for multinational corporates across the country and serves on the board of Amesho Trust, which seeks to empower young black female optometrists through equity funding for their own businesses. As a broadcaster, community builder, businesswoman and speaker, her biggest role is being mom to two girls who she wishes to inspire to excellence by being a solid example of hard work, commitment and leading with kindness. Future Global Leaders Club is pleased to present to you Oluetu Nodata as the host of our virtual seminars and workshops. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, how special was that, Mr. Marx? Hey, he said he'd do a very brief introduction, and I guess, yeah, the video did a great job. Thank you so much. <laughs> well, good morning to our headmistress, our deputy, Mr. Marx, to all the teachers of the college. A warm greeting to all the girls of the college, both current uh, and old, and to the parents and proud parents of the college. We are so honored to have you with us here this morning. Yo, what a beautiful sight you all are. I remember sitting with the legs crossed in front here like the junior, juniors in my first day of high school in 1998, and then of course sitting on the chairs there like the matrix when I matriculated in 2002. And with that said, I'd just like to give a special shout out, I think, to the very best class in collegiate history, in my unbiased opinion, the class of 202. Hello, ladies. 
<laughs> Just being here this morning, so many memories came flooding back, you know, some as an assurance that I have indeed lived a purpose-filled life, and some as a question mark uh, on whether I'd left anyone behind in my pursuit of my dreams. As a collegiate girl, a girl of the college, an old girl, although I'll refrain from re referencing myself as one here on art, we are cut from a different cloth. And that's not to say that we all come from the same homes and face the same struggles, but rather that the education we gain or have gained in these majestic halls sets us apart in terms of grooming, purpose, and identity. My first day at Collegiate was in the junior school in grade seven. My mom had recently remarried and we had moved to Port Elizabeth. My in initiation into primary school was actually at a boarding school in Guazulu Natal. There I had formed my own stable sense of identity and my pockets of excellence. And then I had to relocate 13 years old suddenly. Now before I give you a picture of a sad preteen, let me prefix the story with this. A 24-year-old mom and wife was widowed and left with her five-year-old baby girl to navigate life without any certainty of what the future will hold. This 24-year-old young black woman raised, educated, loved, and supported this baby girl until she was 12 years old. She rooted her in kindness and in hard work, in self-belief, tenacity, and tons and tons of glamour, while well supported by an army of sisters, girlfriends, aunts, and grannies. That 24-year-old was my mother, and she knew that when she was able to, she'd plant me in a garden with diverse, strong leaders and beautiful young women who would allow me to bloom to be the lady that stands before you today. So yes, 1997 was a year of great change for me, standing in the hallways of the junior school with my mom fervently advocating for my last minute admission into the class of <laughs> 1997. My hard work in Guazulu Nadal showing that I was indeed ready and able to be a girl of the college. I do not tell the story purely out of sentiment, but with the purpose of sketching out what an intentional life means in carving out purpose and leading a life of impact, and most importantly, leading to leaving a legacy that is honorable. See, my foundation was that of sisterhood, unity, and limitless possibilities. I was always a girl of the college, nurtured by deeds, not words. When I was asked to address all of you today, of course, my heart instinctively went to our school motto, facta non verba, deeds not words. We are blessed to be in the unique position of not only being able to impact lives by our deeds, but also to completely change the trajectory of our school, our metro, our country, and yes, indeed, even the trajectory of the world. I would like to paint a picture of the privilege we have as girls of the college and then color that in with the responsibility that privilege comes with. We have the experience of a diverse representation of our country right here in these walls. Amongst us are young women of all races with different cultural backgrounds, different family dynamics, a myriad of financial advantages and disadvantages, and even gender identifications that are different. So when you ladies sit in class, um, do you see your peers for all that they are, or do we all magically become the same once we don the same school uniform? What intentional conversations and experiences do you have with others to help you gain a better understanding of the person that is sitting next to you. I say we are privileged because we are given a road map to our identity through our school motto and the rules that we abide by when we step through those gates. That should be a commonality that is an equalizer, but truthfully speaking, it is not. Only when we open up our minds and our hearts to receiving 
learning, and growing from the lived experiences that others have, are we then truly harnessing the privilege of being a collegiate girl? See, as part of our identity, empathy and kindness are at our core. The responsibility that comes with the privilege is for us to learn from each other, then really step out and go and teach others. That is a responsibility we cannot pass on to those that do, do not have the privilege of a diverse peer group. It is such an important responsibility as we are each a representation of a generation of mothers, aunts, sisters, grandmothers, and daughters. How we see and engage with the world today shapes the world that our kids will live in. There's a beautiful quote on identity by Chuck Polnick, and he says, nothing of me is original. I'm a combined effort of everyone I've ever known. And more profoundly, Mahatma Gandhi says, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. We are a nation that sadly still stands deeply divided by race, culture, and economic inequality. And I think more profoundly, we stand deeply divided by our inability to truly see and hear each other. When we come to a point where we realize that as uniquely and as wonderfully made we all are, our strength is in seeing our differences and finding our identity in our common purpose which is, of course, to build, not to destroy, to love and be loved, and certainly to leave the world better than when we found it. What is the future, though, without an understanding of the past and an intentional molding of the present? I had to consult Google on the definition of future because I wanted to get it right. And Google says it is a time as regarded as still to come. Yeah, not quite the concise definition I was looking for, but I will lean on still to come as I anchor my second last point. How do we work on a time that's set to come by anchoring our lives on deeds, not words? I think our starting point is recognizing the parts of the past and the present that we do want to nurture those roots that we want to keep healthily watered. Here are some that I think are really important. Courage. As shown in the history of our country, the courage to step into the face of what is wrong and stand firmly in the truth of what is right. Integrity. As shown by the leadership body of our school in my matric class, led by our head girl, Jenny Jansen van Rensburg. A present example of integrity is also a girl in my matric class in 2002, Essay Tumangokyo, who's now a CASA and the deputy president of the BMF in South Africa. You see, you can be many things as a young woman, but being a woman rooted in integrity is absolutely non-negotiable. Success as a school and as individuals and as a community is a root from the present that I definitely do want to nurture and carry on to a time yet to come. What is required for success to be a reality in this time yet to come is for us, all of you in this room, however young or old, to continue to go relentlessly towards the direction of your dreams. I wouldn't be standing here today as a broadcaster, a speaker, a community builder, an award-winning businesswoman, a mother, if I had not stepped boldly into the direction of my dreams. Deeds, not words. So our future, collegiate girls, is anchored on your courage to question the status quo and to strive for life and a reality that you would be proud to hand over to a generation that is yet to come. It is anchored in your being individuals with integrity, where you choose to do the right thing, even when no one else is watching. Your success is the critical route in ensuring that the lives of those still yet to come 
are impacted positively by each of your lives. You cannot succeed if you play small. I'm sure you've all heard of the saying that there is no reward in shrinking so that others are not intimidated by your greatness. But you also cannot succeed by bulldozing through life with an irresponsible arrogance. We all stand on the shoulders of giants, but you cannot be one if you are not anchored in humility and the need to nurture others to thrive. This brings me to my last thought. How are you of impact today, and how do you continue to be of impact in the future? When you initially think of impact, you think of two things colliding, right? And the collision causing one or both of the objects to shift. I will not lean on Google on this definition. I will just stick to my understanding. So how does your life today or tomorrow shift or cause a change in the position of someone else's life? Shift the position of the school, the metro, the country, and yes, shift the position of the world. We are erroneously made to believe that in order to be of impact, you need to do one big thing. I honestly believe that a collection of small things can amass to being of incredible impact. A passionate young debater with an inquisitive mind and the gift for speaking with clarity had her valedictory in these halls in the year 2000. Having conquered debating championships, national speaking competitions throughout her high school career, her path to excellence was already in sight. Four years later, she was a broadcasting journalist with the SABC right here in Kabecha, and a few years later, she was both an on-air and radio, TV and radio personality. Correction, she was an award-winning on-air radio and TV personality. She won the Vodacom TV Feature Journalist of the Year, the Radio Feature Journalist of the Year, and the BBC Africa News Journalist of the Year. These are just a few of the accolades associated with her name. She's also been included in the Mail and Guardian's top 200 South Africans. She started with just a passion for, word, for words, and then she used her passion for purpose. Her name is Asanda Magaka, a supernova, whose footsteps I have followed as a young speaker and debater, a girl of the college who inspires excellence. The definition of impact that also res resonates well with me is the ability to inspire others through living a truly authentic life. This directs me to a very simple example of a mother I watched while I was growing up who played the role of being a wife, a mother, an aunt, an executive, a student, and a businesswoman all at the same time. She was able to handle all of her responsibilities without sacrificing any part of her life. The word mbogodo truly should be used to describe women of this caliber. I watched her acquiring a master's degree, opening and running businesses, being a senior manager, a board member, serving on multiple professional bodies, and yet she was still able to come home, cook supper for her kids, and come to a few of the collegiate parents' meetings and achieve all. That woman is Umasis Vuyozi Tumane, born and bred in the Eastern Cape. I started off this talk with referencing my mom, and what a solid example of rising above circumstance she is, leading by example, the example of sheer power will, and conviction. I stand tall today because I stand on her very firm and indeed stylish shoulders. One of my favorite female leaders is Dr. Pumzilem Lambo Nguga. She was the first female deputy president of our beautiful country, a woman that understands the essence of servant leadership, the essence of standing in the glory of being woman and leading with wisdom and compassion. She left the position of DTP president without a stain to her name, and then went on to represent all of us at the United Nations. She did all these whilst being a wife, 
a business person, and a mom. So ladies, in case you are wondering, and for whatever reason you've allowed the voices of naysayers and, and societal constructs dilute your belief on what you can achieve as a woman, I just want to remind you that as a woman, you do not need validation from anyone. You are already ahead of the curve. You are woman, and that is your superpower. Our ability to gently, then firmly seek for the truth and stand for it, no matter the circumstance, as shown by Lilian Goy, Magda Vesky, and Asanda Magagla. We are also fearless in the pursuit of justice. No barrier will stop a woman in the pursuit of the truth and in the pursuit of justice. An example is hanging on our wall in Professor Tulima Donzel. Our instinctive tendency to build and not to tear down and to empower along the way are exactly why the African adage, it takes a village, is true. When we stand together, there is absolutely no force that is stronger than our will. There is not a single room that you will walk into that you are not deserving to be in. You may encounter some unfortunate souls who may undermine you, or at least try to, and want to put you in a box of, oh, she's a girl, she's so emotional. You are a woman, and that is your superpower. The power of your femininity, your unique instincts, your sass, your kindness, your compassion, and how incredibly passionate you are, that uniqueness therein lies your greatness. Ladies, if you want to go and be great, I dare you to go ahead and be great. Mr. Marks did this intro for me, but I think I must do it again. This is how I'm introduced in spaces all over the country and in global platforms. All Way to Know Data is a passionate and intentional advocate of empowering the girl child and creating spaces where individuals from all walks of life are seen and heard and given the opportunity to achieve to their full potential. A former national marketing manager for Africa's largest optometric network and an award business achiever, her transition to media and broadcasting came as an invigorating and challenging adventure. After only two years in the industry, she's now a radio host on Cape Town's biggest radio station. She's the go-to host and MC for multinational corporates across the country, a signed and working model for Topco Models, one of the largest commercial agencies in the country. She serves on the board of Ometlo Trust, which seeks to empower young black female optometrists through equity funding for her own businesses. A former Miss South Africa second runner-up in 2020, she continues to work with the Miss South Africa organization as a broadcaster, model, community builder, businesswoman, and speaker. Her biggest role is being mom to two girls, who she wishes to inspire to excellence by being a solid example of hard work, commitment, and leading with kindness. I want to leave you with this question. That is my intro 20 years after leaving these great halls. What will your intro sound like in the future? I thank you. Um, on behalf of the school, I'd like to say thank you very much to Mrs. Notata for the time and effort in speaking to us today. Thank you so much for reminding us of the true beauty of being women and of being a collegiate girl. Thank you for enforcing our message of our motto of fact and on verba and how through not only our words but through our actions we can become the women that we want to be and we can become the change that we want to be. Thank you for showing us today how to live and lead a life of impact and of purpose. Um, just thank you for celebrating this momentous occasion with us and we hope that you have a beautiful 20 year reunion and we hope that you'll accept this token of our appreciation to you. Thank you.
thank you from me too for that incredible message for the girls. Our final reading is from Philippians 4, verse 4 to 9. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honorable, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Will you please stand for the singing of the school song? and guests, thank you for being with us today. We invite you to join us in the quad now for the flag raising ceremony when our school leaders who are sitting along the side will honour our school colours. After the flag raising ceremony we ask you to please sign the visitors book in the foyer and then to proceed to the ivy leaf where tea and sumptuous eats will be served. Our board of parents have set up a market outside the Ivy Leaf, and this market will move later on to the Games Club. We encourage you to support our hostel. The Games Club will also be open all afternoon and tomorrow for you to relax, chat, and enjoy some time with your friends. Please also feel free to visit the school's resource center and any other area of the school. Any girl, grab a girl and she'll be pleased to show you around if you've forgotten what is what, <laughs> or what is where. In the old blue area behind the Stevenson Hall, you will find photographic displays of the reun reunion group's matric years assembled in the cabinets. Also take time to walk up the staircase in the old blue area and view the excellent artwork of our girls on the wall. Please make yourself selves home at Collegiate as you share old memories. Right, the head girl is going to lead the stage party of the stage. The stage party will be followed, or will the, the RCL and the prefix will then lead out to assemble in the quad. Old girls, please don't leap up, as Mr. Marks will then take over and he will dismiss you in due course. And girls, you will be escorted to your various positions in and around the quad. All girls, may you have a lovely weekend, and we look forward to welcoming you all back in 2024 
for the 150 Jubilee ce celebrations. Mikawe will now lead us out. Okay, the old girls, please join us for the flag raising. You're going to be on the upper quad, and there are some chairs there for, for people who need them. So please, if you can just follow out um, now. Yeah, thank you. After the grade 12, sorry, after the grade 12. Okay, grade 12s, you're not going to go out onto the courtyard there. You will come down this side, right this entrance over here, and you lead out. You can start now, yeah. Grade 12s. My right side is blocked. That side's blocked. So you've got to go out to my left here. Down this side, girls, down here. No, not out there, down here. Girls, down here. These little ones are going to go. Yes. And then we'll wait to go. Levens will sit there. Grade Levens, unfortunately, you have to stay till the end. So it's just the grade 12s at the moment. Okay, in grade eights, just listen to me what's going to happen to you. So you're going to obviously be on the bottom quad. So you're going to go past the staff. You're going to go through the same entrance at the exit that the grade 12s are doing. You're going to go past, past the staff room corridor, past the labs.
You all please stand to attention. Let us read and pray. Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you our special school collegiate. We give you all the teachers and staff who work here. We give you all the children who study here and salute those who have come before. We seek your ongoing blessings for the generations that follow. We pray that Collegiate continues to nurture creativity and inquiring minds as we empower our girls to deal with their world. May it be a place where we love to learn and where we learn to love. A place where everyone is respected and all are deeply valued. We pray that you will continue to guide all associated with Collegiate. With all your other gifts, grant us the gift of a grateful heart, O oh Lord. We, all, we ask all this in your name. Amen. Prefix and RCL, please turn and face the flagpole. Please stand to attention. Prefix and RCO, please exit towards the corridor and then down towards the consumer lab. Our flag symbolizes who we are and unifies us. We'll now hand over to Mr. Marx. Right, that concludes our ceremony. So you are all dismissed. Thank you.